Welcome to my video review of the Sapphire Technology Radeon RX 460. This is one of the newer AMD cards out based on the Polaris architecture. This is the budget offering. Now they do two models with this. There is a Nitro version. This is the slightly cheaper standard one. They're both overclocked though. Notice we have at the top two oversized fans. They're nine centimeters in diameter. Just taking a look at the box to run through some of the specs and information. As you see the overclocked sticker there, it's overclocked slightly from the reference card but not by a huge amount so if you see benchmarks and tests with the stock card it's not going to be hugely different, slightly in favour of this. Notice on the side here we have some more information. Um, at the moment it's 64-bit drivers only so bear that in mind if you have a 32-bit system. Some of the features on the back, you'll notice we have latest DirectX 12, OpenGL 4.5, PCI Express is 3, but it will also work on the times 2 slots on the older boards. You get the driver CD, probably best to go online to get the latest drivers. They've been a few bug fixes and your usual club and warranty information is also included. There was one thing that I noted in the user manual it did state that you needed to use a power connector for the card. This card doesn't have a power connector the Nitro version does so there's no power connector on this. You have three output ports DVI, HDMI which is the latest version of 2.0 and a display port as well Notice the top section here is vented to allow a bit of air to circulate outside as well, expel the hot air. Now the power consumption on this is rated to below 75 watts, so I was expecting possibly some semi-passive operation at uh, when the card's not under load, but these fans spin all the time, albeit slowly. Um, this version doesn't have the heat pipes on, perhaps the Nitro version does have that semi-passive mode. The fans are reasonably quiet, there's a little bit of bearing chatter noise but you wouldn't really notice it with the side panel on the case. You will see that their board has been extended but there is no additional sort of electronics on it. It's been extended really to allow for the larger heatsink and dual fans. What I've done is just a quick bench on a game that I play quite a bit, Hitman absolution now there are loads of sites that have tons of benchmarks so I won't go too far and too much in depth on that just to give you a few ideas um, this is a 6570 card that I had from a few years ago and at medium settings now to be fair the game did play okay normally it's just this scene here which is the benchmark test where it sort of struggled a bit and to get a bit choppy um, you couldn't use anything higher than medium if I compare the car's performance, it would be slightly better than the GTX 750 Ti in most of the games that I've tried, but I wouldn't say it was a big update from that card. Personally, I think you need to approximately double the performance of the card, but also consider other factors like power consumption because some of the older cards can run quite hot and they can use quite a bit of power, so the newer cards tend to be more energy efficient. I really think you need to move up to the um, 470 to get a significant boost it's about twice as fast as this card so if you're doing serious gaming then that's the one to really go for this is a sort of an entry-level offering there was still a bit of choppiness at the ultra settings with the card on hitman here so it wasn't entirely perfect it was pretty good but like I said if you have a 750 Ti you really want something a bit faster than this it's not a big update it's more of a sort of slight update for you